investing than we do. But surprisingly enough, Warren Buffett has been very open about how he's earned his wealth. The CEO of Berkshire Hathaway is here to teach us how to make millions with just a little money and even more impressive, all you need is just three stocks to reach Lamborghini status. I mean, who needs a degree in finance when you have Warren Buffett telling you what to do, right? According to him, the secret to his success lies in value investing, which involves finding stocks that are undervalued by the market and investing in them for the long haul. And he's not talking about a few months or a year. We're talking about years, even decades of waiting and watching those stocks grow. While most people want to get rich today, those who are patient are rewarded handsomely more than those who don't. Along with having patience, you also have to have persistence and the ability to resist the temptation to jump ship when the stock market takes a dip. Kind of like right now when the recession signals are flashing red before our very eyes. However, some people continue to think that this time is different and a new bull market is coming. So grab your calculators and get ready to take some notes because Warren Buffett is about to show us how to make millions one undervalued stock at a time. Let's focus on Buffett's investment philosophy, which involves buying and holding stocks for years, even decades, rather than trying to time the market or make quick profits. His strategy is rooted in his belief in the power of compounding. He understands that the longer he holds on to a stock of a high-quality company, the more time it has to grow and generate returns. To find this type of company, as mentioned earlier, Buffett employs a value investing approach and looks for companies that are trading at a lower price than their intrinsic value, as determined by their financials, assets, and earning potential. In simpler terms, by buying these stocks when they're undervalued, he's able to maximize returns when the market eventually corrects and the companies reach their true potential, as he predicted, leading to rising stock prices. Isn't it just amazing how he has this knack for investing in struggling companies and turning them into gold mines? It's not like he's just throwing darts at a board blindfolded and hoping for the best. Instead, he actually takes the time to understand the companies, their potential, and their risks, and then makes decisions grounded by extensive analysis while avoiding the temptation of jumping from one hot stock to another. But buying these kinds of stocks is only part of the equation. Buffett is also very selective when it comes to diversification. While many investors choose to spread their money across a wide range of stocks and industries to reduce risk, Buffett believes in holding a concentrated portfolio of stocks. In his view, diversification can actually dilute returns and lead to mediocre performance. Instead, he prefers to focus his investments on a handful of companies that he believes in and trusts. There's nothing magic. We like to put a lot of money in things that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Um, we think diversification, is, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably because there aren't that many wonderful businesses are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood. And to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as madness. You know, if all you have to achieve is, is average, uh, it uh, may preserve your job, but it's a confession in our view that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. On a personal portfolio basis, you know, I own one stock, you know, but it's a business I know it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. Uh, <laughs> Do I need to own 28 stocks in order to you know, have proper diversification? You know, be nonsense. And within Berkshire, I could pick out three of our businesses and I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned and I had all my money in Berkshire. Now, I love it, the fact that we can find more than that and that we keep adding to it. But three wonderful businesses, it's more than you need in this life to do very well. And uh, the average person isn't going to run into that. I mean, if you look at how the fortunes were built in this country, they weren't built out of a portfolio of 50 companies. They were built by someone who identified with a, with a wonderful business. Coca-Cola is a great example. A lot of fortunes have been built on that. And there aren't 50 Coca-Colas. 
you know, there aren't 20. If there were, it'd be fine. We could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and, and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it. And, uh, and the truth is you don't need it. A really wonderful business is very well protected against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and, and, and the competition. I mean, you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition. And three of those will be better than a hundred average businesses. At, uh, and they'll be safer, incidentally. I mean, uh, there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there than there is in owning 50 well-known big businesses. And uh, it's amazing what has been taught over the years in finance classes about that. But uh, I can assure you that if I had to bet the next 30 years on the fortunes of my family that would be dependent upon the income from a given group of businesses, I would rather pick three businesses from those we own than own a diversified group of 50. You know, what he's saying is that much of what is taught in modern corporate finance courses is twaddle. Of course, this approach also comes with risks. If one of the stocks in his portfolio experiences a significant decline, it can have a major impact on his overall returns. But for Buffett, the potential rewards of a concentrated portfolio outweigh the risks. He also recommends that most investors who do not want to commit to finding and analyzing a stock just stick with low-cost index funds that track the S&P 500, because that too will have average returns and they are reliable. 7% on a yearly basis is pretty darn good. Just ask the crypto bros who seen prices drop over 50% since their all-time highs not too long ago. Now, let's find out how Buffett harnessed his investment strategy to these three stocks that made him millions and how he benefited from them so much, namely American Express, Coca-Cola, and 